Okay, this next part is actually super important, and it seems obvious, but before you get your pressure washer in here, you got to locate one of these tags. So it'll be two or three of these typically on, on a tough torque axle. These tags will give you the build information that you need. The two numbers that you need to uh, make note of is that this is a 46BR and its serial number is 0143588. The other number you need is this longer one here and you'll notice that there are multiple variations of the K46, many variations, um, like over 20. And uh, the typically it's the last four numbers that are the indicator. So in this case, 4220. And that sets it apart from the other two or three K46s that were used in the X300 John Deere. So it even happens that within the same model of the same manufacturer, within a spread of years, there will be a difference. And sometimes it's just simply a supersedure of parts. Uh, and so they change the axle number in order to reflect that. The internals will appear so very similar, but the specs will be off a bit. So don't just assume that you can go into your John Deere dealer, tell them you have an X300 or an L110 and get exactly what you need. Um, Ideally, make sure you get both of those numbers I showed you before you take a pressure washer to it and peel those decals off. Alright guys, well I hope that I've got uh, not too much going on. See this is in the frame. It's just a counterweight for my um, fume hood for welding. but. We'll see how long until I hit my head on this. Now that we've got our tough torque out on the bench, got it cleaned up. I can't wait to show you inside how these things work because they're actually so simple, it's it's almost silly. Um, you know, I think sometimes if we think of hydrostatic, we start thinking of automatic transmissions with planetary gears and bands and clutches. But inside here, you'll see it's literally two hydraulic pumps, one working in reverse as a motor, and a plate that manipulates one of those. So. We'll get in and uh, hopefully there's not too many surprises. I've got my standard set of parts for it, but uh, We'll see might have to order s some some extras in you never really know at first, right? Incidentally, if any of you are in BC and you would like to just have me do this for you shoot me a message. We'll work something out and uh, Labor for these is not too bad you start getting into like the uh, 60 series uh, can be a little bit more but those guys also last a lot longer that's going to go in a garbage pile Yeah, we definitely got some weird going on in there. All right. So that's too much slop right there. That's gonna work on wearing down the old spline or the new spline. So this is the input shaft. This is where, of course, your belt power goes into your transmission. The shaft, though, is hardened. Uh, the pulley tends to not be as hard. And in this case, it is the wear item. I don't think I have one. Now, the thing with pulleys and shafts is that shafts are hardened. Anytime you get a spline shaft, it's a hardened thing. Uh, so the pulley is going to be softer, which is what's going to wear. So here's our new input shaft. It's not horrendous. But what's going to happen is as this is going to be turned, there's a fair amount of tension on this uh, drive belt assembly essentially just wearing on the shaft, wearing more on the pulley. As the pulley wears out more, the shaft is going to start to take some wear. I mean, I can see in here even uh, this bottom half inch of the shaft has been taking wear, uh, which makes sense because this pulley is going to be trying to be pulled over by the belt. It's going to be canted a little bit like that. Of course, that's exaggerated, but that gives you the idea. So we don't go and wreck our new input shaft. We're going to get a new pulley. 
I hate finding something right at the beginning that uh, that uh, I didn't order. Now, luckily, there's actually a very easy fix for this. Uh, well, you know, watching the millennial farmer there, he's uh, he can usually get out of some sort of tricky spot or just get out of a bunch of work because you know, I mean, millennials, why why do more than you have to? So he's got this snap thing. I mean, maybe I'm not holding the pulley right. Oh, gotta hold it like that. Hey, look at that. It actually worked. Look at that. A millennial taught me something. I'll be damned. So, okay, so we got that there taken care of. Yeah, that's a much better fit. It's a little bit of looseness, you know, but considering the grade of these pulleys, <laughs> you would think that these would actually be better for how much they cost. Um, oh well, is what it is. So just a quick orientation of what we got going on here. I left this here on so that I can show you. Uh, this is that lever that sticks out the back, of course. And uh, this is the, uh, essentially, it's, it's like an override, basically. It's a manual override. And it's very, very simple how it works. Basically, when you pull this lever and engage the detent, uh, you have essentially uh, run, there's a little pin with there's a bit of an eccentric shaft and the shaft runs in the pin. It just pulls that pump off just enough that uh, fluid can then pass through without having to actually go through the pump works. And uh, there's, you know, there's not much to it. This device here, this is our parking brake assembly. Uh, there is a small, uh, basically a disc in there or a small rotor in there. And uh, that's what that's for. And on this side, this is our main go pedal. Inside, it's turning the interface uh, plate for the pump uh, one way or the other, and you'll see shortly how that works. On our bottom side, pretty standard case. In this case, we have two drain plugs in here. Most K46s don't have that. It is a kit. You can put that in if you want, or you can DIY it. All right, so if you haven't already drained the fluid, now's when you're going to want to pop this um, fill cover right here, flip this over, drain the oil out. We have drains on the bottom side on this one, so uh, I'm just going to leave this closed right now. It's going to make a little bit less of a mess. It'll be easier to control. In case I don't say it later, when you pull these things apart, you want to be pulling them apart upside down. This probably is, seems uh, somewhat obvious considering that all the case bolts are on the bottom. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really sit or stand or whatever, right? So you don't want to be going like this or working on edge, split the case. You're going to find a couple things might fall out and, uh, you know, might lose a piece or two, uh, like your intermediate shaft, for example, it'll drop right out. So uh, you can buy uh, case stands if you want. Um, they're over a hundred bucks. I don't know exactly how much they are. Or you can make something up, you know, you could even put this thing in a vise carefully, uh, you know, if you wanted, whatever, but make it comfortable for yourself. I have a simple little stand here. There we go. It's nothing pretty, but it does the trick. Grab a 12 mil, just turn our torque up 